This woman wants to lose weight. The nurse tells her that she only needs one jar to lose 10 pounds. It is a Chinese method of weight loss, and it's popular with many stars. The girl is not particularly trusting as she lies face down. The nurse places jars on her one by one. Immediately after, she opens her mouth wide open and sucks all the fat out of the woman's body. The show's story immerses us in a paranormal world, where two brothers named Dean and Sam Winchester travel across the USA and fight against supernatural evil. This time, the evil hunters travel to Minnesota, where something is killing fat people and sucking the fat entirely from their bodies. The episode starts in the town of Stillwater, where a hot dog eating contest is held. A fat man wins the contest with one hot dog over his opponent. The man in second place is unhappy with the result and accuses his competitor of cheating. But the fat man gets the prize anyway, and he goes to his car to eat the hidden hot dog that helped him win unfairly. An unknown hooded man appears in the back of the car and attacks the man. Like a vacuum cleaner, he sucks the fat man's fat until he completely drains his body. The news of the mysterious death of the fat man from Minnesota reaches the Winchester brothers. They learn from the internet that the man lost 100 kilos of weight during his death, which leads the brothers to believe in the involvement of otherworldly beings. Under the guise of FBI agents, they go to the Minnesota Department of Investigation to find out more information about the circumstances of the murder. An autopsy reveals that the victim's internal organs are damaged as if all life has been sucked out of him. A female sheriff tells the Winchesters that the man had been active in eating contests and never missed a contest. His arch rival was a guy nicknamed Skinny Jim. The victim was the only one Jim couldn't beat in Stillwater, so he immediately fell under the suspicion of the cops. However, he has an alibi, numerous witnesses confirm that they saw him in the dining room at the time of the murder. The Winchesters decide to interrogate Skinny Jim themselves to ensure he is innocent. He's not particularly upset about his rival's death and is sure he got what he deserved. Dean draws attention to the magical artifacts on the shelves behind the man. Jim explains to the brothers that these are the talismans of his wife, Mala, who is of gypsy descent. Without talking, the brothers test Mala for any connection to evil forces. While Dean distracts Jim with questions about the contest, Sam discreetly sneaks into the couple's bedroom to find evidence. He notices an unusual pouch on the bedside table and takes it with him to examine. Once they're done looking for evidence, the brothers leave Jim their card in case he remembers anything else about the day of the murder. Inside the pouch, the Winchesters find human hair and various magic items. Sam finds on the internet that gypsies commonly use such bags to cast spells. The brothers decide that this is how Mala helps her husband eliminate the competition. However, she comes to the Winchesters for her bag and tells them a completely different story. As it turns out, Mala loved the victim and had been cheating on her husband with him for years. Despite his being overweight, it was only with him that she could feel loved. Mala wanted to help her lover win the contest so that she could divorce her husband, so she cast a spell on him, hoping that after that, she could leave with her lover to another state. The Winchesters realize they've got the wrong suspect and need to look elsewhere for the supernatural trail. Meanwhile, a woman works out late into the night at a local gym to lose weight before her wedding. When she finishes, she gets on the scale to check her results. Suddenly she hears strange noises and looks around to see where they are coming from. The killer attacks his victim again from behind and knocks her to the ground. The last thing she sees before she dies is some creature crawling under her clothes and sucking the life out of her, deflating her body like a balloon. The next day, the Winchesters arrive at the scene. This time they manage to examine the corpse and notice a big red stain on the dead woman's body, like a mark from a suction cup. They learn from the police officer that the murdered woman had also lost several dozen pounds at the time of her death. Dean interrogates the trainer who was supposed to be closing the gym last night. In tears, she blames herself for leaving work early and being unable to save her client. When she turns around to get a tissue, Dean notices the same stain on her waist as on the victim's body. At the end of the day, the Winchesters discuss what they've learned. It turns out that a similar spot for siphoning fat was also on the first person who was killed. A connection is finally made between the victims, they all had their body fat sucked out. Dean discovers that the gym trainer used to be overweight too, but lost it after a visit to a Canyon Valley spa. He and his brother watch a commercial for the resort, where a beautiful married couple enticingly suggests that overweight people lose weight without grueling workouts or stiff diets. The brothers come to Canyon Valley pretending to be job applicants. Since there was only one job for a trainer, only Sam was hired. Dean is assigned to the kitchen to prepare healthy breakfast for clients. A local sheriff comes to the resort to get her body in shape. The establishment's owner, Maritza, takes her to the treatment room to put on slimming jars. She warns the client that the procedure may leave red spots and bruises on her body. In the process, the sheriff relaxes and slowly falls asleep. After waiting for the client to pass out completely, Maritza reveals her true identity. A worm with a huge toothy mouth crawls out of her mouth and sucks the fat out of the sleeping woman's waist, sucking the fat out of her body. The older Winchester is constantly scolded in the kitchen for not doing a good job. Angry and hungry, 
Dean decides to steal the pudding meant for the spa's customers. While no one is watching, he eats the treat and immediately regrets it. He begins to lose touch with reality and faints. In the meantime, Sam conducts his first yoga practice, which the clients aren't thrilled about. As the resort guests get into a dog pose, he notices that each has red marks on their backs. After training, Sam gets a call from Dean, half dead, asking him to save him. The younger brother finds Dean in a food warehouse, telling him that he has been poisoned with something. Furious, Sam interrogates the cook and discovers that the pudding has special additives to speed up his metabolism. Dean gradually comes to his senses and examines the jar of additives more closely. He informs his brother that they are not supplements but strong sleeping pills added to the customer's food. The Winchesters decide to question the sheriff, who has recently returned from treatment at this diabolical resort. She brags to the brothers that she was able to lose 5 pounds in one day, which perplexes them. She tells them that her husband left her because she was overweight and that her visit to the spa is an attempt to feel beautiful again. Therefore, she is not embarrassed that the fat leaves her body so quickly. The brothers tell her that all the victims are connected by red marks on their bodies. The sheriff shows her lower back and says she was left with the same spot from a spa treatment that the establishment owner gave her. She admits that she ate pudding before the treatment, after which she slept through the entire session and felt nothing in the process. Meanwhile, Maritza learns from her husband that Dean and Sam are not workers but ghost hunters. In a panic, she runs to her office to get rid of the jars of client fat that are stored in the refrigerator. Unable to help herself from the sight of the grease, she lets the worm out again to feast on it. Dean finds her and arranges an interrogation. Maritza tells the older Winchester her story. She is Pistico, a Peruvian creature that feeds on human fat. She assures the hunter that she did not kill anyone but rather parasitized human bodies. She and her husband opened Canyon Valley so that people could lose excess weight and she could freely obtain food from them. She admits that her brother Alonzo, who works as a cook at the resort, may be behind the killings of overweight people. Meanwhile, Marika's husband finds her brother and orders him out of the establishment before he ruins their family business. Mocking Alonzo, he tells him that his sister doesn't want to see him anymore. This causes him to become enraged, and he kills his brother-in-law. Sam finds the man's bloody corpse and informs Maritza. In tears after her husband's death, Maritza tells the Winchesters the whole truth about Alonzo. She left Peru with her brother, hoping for a better life in which they would not be monsters. They agreed to coexist peacefully with ordinary people and only eat enough fat to satisfy their hunger. But Alonzo did not like the idea of dividing his food into portions, and gradually he began to lose control of his actions. Once, during a routine spa treatment, he almost killed a client. After that, Alonzo was transferred to work in the kitchen to limit his contact with people. But the more Maritza forbade her brother, the more he felt hungry and angry. Soon he was entirely out of control and began killing ordinary people. To end the brutal murders of innocents, Maritza reveals that her brother may be hiding in the basement from the Winchesters. Armed with flashlights and silver knives, the brothers descend into the basement. Along the way, they find empty grease cans and the corpse of one of the cooks. Sam notices bloody footprints and moves forward faster than his brother. Alonzo throws a cabinet over him and piles it on top of him. He releases a worm from his mouth, trying to stick to Sam, but he throws it aside. The fat makes Alonzo stronger and faster, so the younger Winchester has difficulty tracking his movements through the dark basement. He tries to provoke Alonzo's negative emotions and says that now Maritza thinks High's a monster too. Immediately he reacts to this, and a fight breaks out between him and Sam. Enraged, Alonzo easily defeats his opponent and tries again to suck the life out of Sam. But Dean comes to his brother's rescue and cuts the worm off Alonzo, taking his life. After all this, the cops arrive on the scene. The brothers lie to the sheriff and tell him that the murders are the work of a homicidal maniac. Sam tries to comfort Maritza, who has lost her entire family in one day. Dean notices this and calls his brother over to him. He tells him he will put Maritza to rest with her family after all the cops leave the establishment. Sam refuses to kill her and convinces his older brother to show mercy to the monster. Dean agrees to keep Maritza alive on the condition that she return to Peru without a return ticket. Back home, the Winchesters discuss the problems in their family relationship. Sam is tired of Dean only seeing him as a younger brother and rescuing him whenever he is in danger. He admits to his brother that sometimes he is really ready to die and wants to make his own choice whether to live or not. On the other hand, Dean is sure that he is doing everything right, and if he were in danger himself, his younger brother would save him too. Contrary to Dean's expectations, Sam is not sure he would have saved his brother had he been on the verge of death. A heavy pause hangs between the Winchesters, and Sam leaves Dean alone. That's all, thanks for watching. Give this video a like, and let us know what movie you'd like to see next. See you soon.